Hi there, I'm Zach Kircher, and you're watching Kircher Talks Entertainment. SpongeBob SquarePants is one of the greatest cartoons of all time, and I've been wanting to talk about it on this channel for a long time. For me and this franchise, go way back. The show's now 25 years old, and I have been watching it for nearly that long. I didn't catch up with the original three seasons when they first aired on Nickelodeon, since my parents didn't have cable at the time, and they would have rather me watch PBS Kids, probably the wise choice to be honest, but I did end up watching those old episodes on DVDs that I rented from Blockbuster or actually owned for myself. I also played the ever-living crap out of Battle for Bikini Bottom on the original Xbox, and my dad was kind enough to take me to the Spongebob movie in a theater back in 2004. And if you have been subscribed to my channel, you may have picked up on my love for Spongebob due to the memes I've incorporated into my videos. It would be an understatement to say that this yellow guy and his friends have been a big part of my life for over two decades. And yet, when I've thought about what I could add to the conversation about Spongebob, I had a very difficult time thinking of something worth talking about. After all, Spongebob videos on YouTube are a dime a dozen. It would be like making a video about Fortnite in the year of our Lord 2024. Everyone else has done it. To name some specific examples, Karsten Runquist had already set the standard for thoughtful video essays about single episodes. 24 Frames of Nick made his beefy hour-long video about the film trilogy, and then you've got L.S. Mark over here losing sleep and his sanity over ranking literally every single episode of Spongebob, at least up to the point that he had published that video. So, that's why it's taking me so long to make a video about Spongebob. In general, I have committed myself to not making a video about something unless I can make a legitimately unique contribution to the conversation. But then, in February of this year, something happened. I became a father to a beautiful, healthy baby girl whom we named Genevieve. My wife and I have been blessed greatly by what she has brought to our little family. Now, you may be wondering, that's cute and all, but what does that have to do with Spongebob? Ah, uh, patience, good people. A great story can't be rushed. Whenever one goes through a major life event, there are always changes that come along with it. That certainly has been the case for my wife and I as we've come to experience parenthood for the first time. But while we expected that our whole world would be upended by having a kid, there have been some other unexpected consequences of becoming parents. One of the biggest ones is that we're never going to look at the media we consume the same ever again. For my wife, she already disliked sad stories in the first place, but now if she watches one that involves kids, she will be emotionally traumatized. She will actively refuse to watch movies like The Land Before Time and Bambi for that reason. As for me, I'm not necessarily the emotional type, but I tend to be pretty analytical to the point that I will fix say on something if it really bothers me. I guess that's a perfect trait for a dude who complains about popular media on the internet, huh? With all of that having been established, let's now talk about a season 3 episode of Spongebob entitled Rockabye Bivalve, and why this in particular hits me so hard as a new dad compared to before. With Father's Day just around the corner, I figured this would be the perfect time to talk about this episode. I will be spoiling Rockabye Bivalve pretty heavily, so if you're that worried about it, the segment's only 11 minutes long, so go watch it on Amazon Prime, and then come back to this video when you're ready. Otherwise, consider that your warning. To give a quick summary of the episode, Spongebob and Patrick are hanging out in front of their houses, as they usually do, but as they're goofing around, they notice an orphaned baby scallop sitting alone next to a piece of coral. They then decide to adopt the scallop and raise him together, with Spongebob assuming the role of the mom and Patrick being the dad. Shortly after they become foster parents to the little guy, Patrick starts going to, um... Work? While Spongebob stays behind to tend to all of the housework and care for the scallop, which they named Junior. That seems like your average situation for a traditional nuclear family, that being during the daytime the dad goes to work and the wife stays home. However, the issue is that when Patrick gets home, he completely dodges responsibility over taking care of the baby, resorting to being a couch potato and leaving Spongebob to do the rest. I think you can assume where things go from there. Growing up and even going into adulthood, I always appreciated how much humor and legitimate commentary came from this short segment. The idea of Patrick and Spongebob playing house together is funny in and of itself, and some great memes have spawned from this episode, but that's only amplified by how much the story pokes jabs at societal issues. Gender norms, deadbeat dads, overworked moms, all of that somehow gets a fair shake in the matter of 11 minutes. No matter what baggage you bring into this episode, it's a funny and insightful look into the struggles of parenthood. But nothing, 
Absolutely nothing could have prepared me for how much this would hit me as an actual parent. Those first few nights after our baby was born were rough, man. I can only say so much since my poor wife had it worse than me, owed to the absolute exhaustion of labor and lack of sleep. But those anxieties that Spongebob and Patrick felt in trying to figure out how to calm Junior down are relatable to both of us. No amount of parenting classes, books, or advice from friends and family fully prepared us for this new challenge we took in raising a child together. We're probably going to spend the rest of our lives wondering how to nurture this little thing we created. As a father, the burden falls on me to make sure I can be a good, reliable provider to my family while also being useful around the house. But just like how my wife has only so much energy during the day, the same is the case for me. Between my full-time 9-to-5 job throughout the week, my weekend landscaping gig in the hot-as-balls Arizona weather, and the hours I dedicate to writing and editing these videos, a lot of my time is spent working. When I get home and see the ever-growing pile of laundry that needs to be folded and put away, it's easy for me to adopt Patrick's mindset of I'll get to it eventually. And yeah, if I come home and find both my wife and daughter having a nap, then I'm probably going to boot up my PS5 and take advantage of the quiet time. But at the end of the day, the short, seemingly inoffensive episode of Spongebob is something that flashes through my mind when I need to remind myself to step up and be a man. When I get woken up at 4am by my baby's cries, Patrick's apathy motivates me to get my butt out of bed and change your diaper. Seeing Spongebob's energy levels get absolutely wrecked reminds me that I can help take a load off my wife by doing things like cooking dinner or washing the dishes. Patrick coming home extremely late at night reminds me that if I'm hanging out with the boys, I need to get home at a decent hour. And perhaps most important of all, watching Patrick and Spongebob get at each other's throats is emblematic of relationships breaking down when parents aren't equally sharing responsibility over their kids. I don't mean to say all of this to scare anyone, particularly all of you dudes in the audience, out of having kids. With all of the challenges comes some of the most joyous, fulfilling moments you could possibly imagine. If you find yourself in a position in your life where you want to start a family and you feel legitimately prepared to do so, go for it. My point though is that it's a very difficult endeavor to be a parent, and Spongebob captures that perfectly through this little story. Rockabye Bivalve was already a good episode in the past, and now that I'm a father myself, it serves as a potent reminder of how important it is to take responsibility in parenthood. In a larger sense, this episode speaks to the true staying power of the first three seasons of Spongebob. They continue to constitute a beloved era of the show simply for how hilarious these episodes can be. However, a lot of these episodes have meaningful themes that stand the test of time. And may I remind you that a lot of these powerful lessons are packed into bite-sized 11-minute segments, and sometimes those messages can be pretty hard to notice. It takes some real skill to make something that's both hysterical and thought-provoking, but a fair amount of episodes do that. For every segment like Survival of the Idiots, where Patrick and Spongebob just get into silly shenanigans in Sandy's tree dome, you get an episode like Squirrel Jokes that tackles the topic of offensive humor in a very insightful manner. Many of these episodes have had a lasting effect on me because of that. Rockabye by Valve just happens to be one that affects me more than others for now. I can only imagine that everyone else watching this who's a fan of Spongebob has been affected by the show in a similar way. And if you haven't seen this show before, I reckon you would find at least one episode or two that speak to you on a personal level. And that's it! Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for doing so really does help me out and I will see you all in the next one.